Hey everybody, Ty Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well here. So, we've been talking a lot of outlooks lately. We just did the April outlook. If you want to see that video, by the way, if you haven't seen it especially, click that link in the top right corner. It'll take you right to it. But in this one, we're going to go with the season outlook here. Spring started pretty recently here, but still a lot of ground to cover. We still have all of April, May, and a good little chunk of June to deal with there. So we're going to go ahead and get a little bit of a preview of those months and go on from there. And the thing to make note of here, and we've been talking about it a lot, really over the last few months on the channel here, is this guy right here, the Enzo. The Enzo, which is more commonly known as El Nino from some folks, which is really just a phase of the Enzo region, has been a significant factor in our weather in recent time as it usually is but what's more significant about it this time is just what exactly is going on with this graph here so to break it down for you and I actually have a video that kind of goes into detail with the oscillations and also the Enzo phase or the El Nino area are the three phases here we have El Nino which is anything that's above 0.5 degrees Celsius will be considered an El Nino phase this is the warmer than average phase so to speak the neutral phase is between 0.5 all the way down to negative 0.5 which is considered a neutral phased Enzo makes sense if you really think about it just based off the wording but if you go below 0.5 degrees Celsius or negative 0.5 degrees Celsius I should say you're going into what's called a La Nina phase and why that's important here is because these temperatures can heavily influence the weather worldwide but especially prevalent impacts across the US are often felt this can impact your winter season your summer really your weather any time of year this affects severe weather and this that's why that's been big talk of the weather community over the last few months because of this abrupt transition usually when we see a transition from the El Nino and a strong one at that which is basically waters warmer than 1.5 degrees Celsius usually we end up having a pretty long lasting El Nino but this time it's just not the case here from January we had that strong El Nino almost historic actually even at one point if we go back towards November December January but look at how quickly we've transitioned down. This is the current time frame that we're at right now. This is April, May, and June here. And if you look at these three solid lines, this purple, green, and blue one here, we're actually entering a neutral phase now. So we went literally from a strong El Nino, which is right here, all the way to the neutral phase right here. This is that neutral phase zone right here. So this is going to heavily influence our weather as we continue to go forward because it has a lot more than, to do than just the ocean temperatures. It also has to do with pressure gradients and all that other stuff. Like I said, if you want to get further into those details, we do have a video up for that. Like I said, the link will be up in the top right-hand corner. A little bit earlier in the video, though. But that being said here, this will uh, definitely cause a big change in regards to our severe weather potential as we go further along. A lot of that we talked about being reflected more so towards Tornado Alley, but if we actually look at what our immediate temperatures could be in regards to the medium to long range here, this is kind of what we have going on. Above average temperatures are going to be prevalent across a good chunk of the country as a whole here, with very few areas, if any at all, really having a chance of below average, below average temperatures at the current moment. Equal chances are kind of prevalent mainly across the southwest and parts in the northern tier of the Rockies, I would say. The further off to the the further off to the east we go towards the central plains here, we're kind of hanging more towards warmer than average temperatures. I think maybe, and this is more so just a hunch on my part, if I had to say where we would get those cooler than average temperatures, it would mainly be in a small area, probably about this big. And maybe the same thing over here, maybe towards the mountains of Arizona, I would say. But that's just a hunch. I have no real way to prove that beyond that point right now. 
especially since we're looking literally 90 days into the future here or we're looking at a 90 day average so like i said kind of hard to really pinpoint just what exactly is going to happen here as we get further into range here we'll be able to get a better idea of what's going on and what each month will look like of course we do have an idea of what april could look like but may june and even into the latter half of june it's still kind of up in the air right now but if one thing that i am notably confident in is the precipitation outlook and i find it ironic that when we did the outlook for april yesterday or the other day i should say that we had a very similar look as far as the seasonal precipitation outlook i think we're going to be getting an increasingly active weather pattern in particular for this upcoming month may i think will also be pretty active and may look pretty similar june is the one that i'm still kind of up in the air about but the fact in the matter is though i'm seeing a pattern that favors heavier precipitation to the south and east in particular Southwest has been dry and that trend looks like it's going to continue. And then we are seeing an increasing trend where the Northwest is also going to be dry. And then for the rest of the states across the country here, we're mainly looking at equal chances of precip. And another interesting indicator is over here towards Alaska, where we have an increasingly active pattern over there as well. Kind of going along with what I was seeing with the April outlook here as well so i find that interesting but we'll be watching of course particularly towards may and june as we go further along through the month of april where things will become a little bit more clear with that just how much precipitation we may see but if we were to go ahead and look at the temperature mount anomalies month to month here we already know what april looks like it's going to be mainly warmer over here towards the heart of the country and over towards the east but keep in mind, we're looking at a 30 day average. We're not going week to week like we did with just the April outlook alone. So if we shift over to May here, notice how that warm air has made a more notable shift to the east here, especially over towards the Great Lakes, where I'm still concerned about some drought issues coming into play here. So we're going to be keeping an extra close eye on this region here as well. And then as we go beyond that point into June, we start to see some of that warmer air taking over towards the southeast now just how significantly warmer the month could be is still kind of up in the air but if this is any indicator especially over towards the mississippi delta we could be looking at maybe even 20 to 30 degrees above average for the month of june here so like i said the heat's coming as we all know it will especially for those of us that live in the south and over towards the plains if we look at precipitation we're of course going to be seeing april as a really active month over towards the south and east and then over towards the west we're going to be looking a little dry we look at may we start to see a little bit of a slowdown and actually a little bit of a resurgence of moisture over towards the northern states and then over towards the great lakes that which is good news for these guys because i'm very concerned about the drought situation over here and as we go towards june we kind of level off once again so we're kind of kind of being this flip-flopping type pattern as we go throughout spring as a whole here of course since we don't have the full details of how things will pan out week to week i wouldn't read too much into this map as of right now this is more or less just a preview of what we could see as we know there's never any certainties until well the weather is happening real time Ohio tornado outbreak i keep talking about it it's a great example of that the one that was from earlier this month so last thing we're going to do is look at the three month averages here and like i said the most notable areas are going to be mainly towards the northern states and then over towards that mississippi delta parts of the midwest where we're seeing those above average temperatures no real area where we're seeing below average temperatures right now over the three month period here the same can be said with the precipitation most of it's going to be over towards the south and eastern parts of the u.s here and then over towards the northern tier of the u.s especially towards the dakotas and montana is where we're going to have that increased precip over there as well otherwise we're looking rather marginal across other parts of the country where we could see either slightly above or below average precipitation possible here the good news once again like i said before is the fact that the great lakes now looks like 
we're kind of sitting in the middle here. We're not necessarily looking at a bone dry spring here, which is one thing that I've been concerned with here because towards the middle of winter, it was really dry over towards this region. We would get snow every once in a while, but it would definitely be far below average in comparison to what it once was. So drought conditions, if they weren't occurring, were starting to occur here. So seeing a little bit of an increase in that weather pattern minus severe weather will help this area a lot. Towards the west here, especially towards the Sierras, we're starting to see a signal for some drier than average conditions. I think this actually would be a welcome site for them in particular because all winter they've been dealing with atmospheric rivers. So a lot of rain and snowfall over towards this region. I'm sure a break would be welcome. But that's pretty much the picture as a whole here. Areas like Florida, we're looking drier than average here. Not really surprised, but typically this isn't going to last. And usually this doesn't really lead to drought because whenever you do get a storm system over here, it's usually rather significant and drops a lot of rainfall. Then on top of that, we always have the wild card of hurricane season. We'll get into that very soon as well. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. Smash that like button. Get that bell on to be notified of the next outlook and the next forecast. And then also, if you're new, of course, hit that subscribe button as well. Make sure you're hitting that share button too. So that way all your friends can be up to date and weather aware. That being said, I hope you guys have a good rest of your Saturday and weekend here. This has been Tire Metalhead Weatherman. I will see you guys in the next one.